Hey guys, just wanted you to know that I couldn't upload this week's episode of Sweeney Todd on Cutthroat Kitchen, um, for reasons. Instead, it's the show. I would like to petition to have all Target Self Magic things renamed to Spelfies. The first grown-up party my family ever dragged me to was when I was about six years old. They all broke off into groups talking about, I don't know, taxes, eating fancy cheeses and just generally doing adult stuff. I didn't pay a lot of attention. As a kid with ADHD who didn't do well just doing one thing, I was incredibly bored. And this party felt like it went forever. Hours? Days? Weeks? Who knows? This week's game also features a party, but unlike the one I went to, this one only lasts one night. But things are very wrong at this party, and if you can't put them right, you might be doomed to relive that one night forever. The Sexy Brutal was released on Steam on the 11th of April 2017 by Cavalier Game Studios and Tequila Works, and it's a macabre mix of mystery and puzzle solving. You play as Lufcardio Boone, attending a masked ball held at a Mansion Com Casino, where your fellow guests are being murdered by the staff over the course of the evening. When the clock strikes midnight though, and everyone is but a corpse, time rewinds itself 12 hours, and the grisly process starts again. It's up to you to figure out how to thwart the staff's efforts, save the guests, and solve the mystery once and for all. Accessibility-wise, the Sexy Brutal could do better, but honestly, it's more a series of minor failings rather than anything major, and these aspects will hopefully be addressed in a series of patches. Following the trend of my past few reviews, the controls of the Sexy Brutal are not customizable, which is a shame because even though the game does support controllers beautifully, the controls might not be suitable for everyone. For the most part, the Sexy Brutal is unvoiced, with dialogue appearing in little bubbles around the speaker. This is mostly fine, except sometimes there is a lot of chatter that can disappear quite quickly, especially if you're not a strong reader or have dyslexia. There's also a scene that, for reasons I'll avoid, is voiced. It's also the only scene that doesn't have any kind of subtitles. There are also a great number of audio cues that serve to give the player an immersive sense that all of the murders and events are happening at once, even if you're not there to witness them. It would be fantastic if there was an option to have captions available for these aspects to really allow deaf and hard of hearing gamers to engage with it. There are some minor issues as well, such as the language option only offering English, and there are instances where sometimes the actions don't execute immediately, but don't get the idea that it's all bad. There are clear demarcations for interactable objects, the fonts that are used are easily readable, and there's a map that makes all known information, including character movements, clear, with the ability to scrub through the 12 hours that the game takes place over. There's an excellent range of diversity amongst the characters. Although the cast is slightly more skewed towards the male, the difference is a matter of two or three characters. More than that though, there is at least one overtly non-straight character, and there are multiple characters with a variety of disabilities, but whose characterization has multiple other facets as well. Overall, the Sexy Brutal is a deadly engaging experience, with squeaky shiny graphics that give off a surreal, plastic, dreamlike feel and a soundtrack that ranges from boogie-in-your-seat modern updates on swing classics to arias that tug on your heartstrings. For lovers of mystery and people who want to test their problem-solving abilities, this will find a welcome home in your libraries. It's available on Steam for $20 and you should really check it out. Take me down to the Paradox City where the grass is green and the girls ask, is the answer to this question no? Hey dudes, it's Braun and I'm here to fact you up good with the first go with the idea that I had at the end of the last video I was in. My brilliant idea that I had was like this, um, fact chase kind of thing where I start with a topic given to me by one of you on Twitter and try to get to a different topic given to me by a different one of you on Twitter through a series of connected facts. Today, I've got to get from eggplants to the economy of Greece, hopefully without going through some kind of collapse. Let's go. 
Although a lot of people think that eggplants are vegetables, they are in fact berries. Conversely, some things that people think are berries are actually female seed cones, such as the juniper berry. The juniper berry, of course, is what is used to give gin its distinctive flavor. One of the most classic gin cocktails is the martini, popularized by James Bond, although Bond prefers his shaken not stirred, which technically makes it Bradford. Bond has been played by a great number of actors, the most prolific of which was Roger Moore, prompting many to jokingly assert that perhaps he's a Time Lord. The Time Lords, the race that the character of the Doctor in Doctor Who belongs to, have two hearts, which isn't really such a strange idea because Octopodes and Squids have three of them, which I guess makes them even more able to travel through time. Octopodes, octopi, octopuses, whatever you want to call them, have surprisingly short lifespans, ranging between 6 months long and 5 years long. Unfortunately, reproduction in most octopus species is the cause of death, as males can only live for a few months after mating, and females starve to death looking after their eggs. It is thought that in mythology, the octopus is a parallel to the upside down severed head of Medusa, with the tentacles being represented by the serpentine locks. Two species of snakes have actually been named after Medusa, the venomous pit viper Bothriopsis medusa and the non-venomous Atractus medusa. B. Medusa is found exclusively in Venezuela, which was colonized by Spain in 1522, although the indigenous populations of the region were not particularly happy about this happenstance. The indigenous nations of Venezuela and other South American regions are the reason we have domesticated many vegetables, including, for instance, potatoes. Potatoes are in the nightshade family, which puts them in the same boat as tomatoes. Being nightshades, it's very important that you be careful which parts of the plant you eat, because eating the wrong part will most definitely leave you with a severe case of death in most instances. The worst part of the tomato plant is the leaves, although they are only slightly poisonous. A lot of early European colonists thought that all parts of the tomato plant were poisonous, including the fruit, because they were racist fools who thought that they knew better than the indigenous populations who had been eating them for centuries. They were wrong, of course, and now the tomato is grown all throughout Europe, where it is exported by a great number of countries, including some country I can't be bothered looking up at number one, some other country that I don't care about at number two, and Greece at number three. In general, agriculture contributes 3.8% of Greece's GDP, which is about $195 billion per annum, which makes the economy of Greece the 46th largest in the world. And that's how you get from eggplants to the economy of Greece in one A4 page. I admit that I had to take the long way around, given that eggplant moussaka is a thing that's pretty popular in Greece, but honestly, where's the fun in that? Think about how many awesome things you've just learned. I hope you got something out of this, because it took me like ages to write. See ya! I think I broke my coriander. It just... It just keeps on going. There's so much coriander. Except you can't use it. Because it's broken. <laughs>